So here we are, welcome back guys, in the beautiful summer sunshine. Of course I'm joking, <laughs> it's the 2nd of January, uh, but it feels like a bright spring day. It's about 10 degrees, sun is beating down, and it's just lovely. I cannot believe that December had like three or two weeks of sort of sub-zero temperatures and then it's just rocketed straight back up and we're still sitting at, as I say, nearly 10 degrees, it's ridiculous. But anyway, hope everyone had a really good Christmas. Welcome to 2023. Hopefully it's gonna be as jam-packed with stuff as I hope it will be. Um, so a mountain pond, same pond I did uh, a video on just before Christmas where it was pissing with rain. That was the swim just up from here. I've come one swim further along, opposite where I was fishing first time on that on that day, uh, because there was a lot of movement in amongst all the rubbish. So it might be dead. Who knows? Let's get set up, and I'll bring you with me. Let's see what the state of these are from the last time we uh, were out. Wherever the thing is. Right, the pin, the pin is already rigged up, it's all tangled of course, but I love these Avon rods because they're just two sections, you don't have to muck about with them, there you are, that's done, a bit tangled at the top but no messing, that's well, a bit tangled now, ah, still got a hook on it. Yeah, still got a hook on it. I'm gonna cut probably three or four feet off of this, just to, actually, new year. Let's cut a rod length's worth of a line off of it, and then it will uh, be somewhat fresh, wouldn't it? So that's that one done. Let's lie you down. Rod one complete. Right, second rod. This has got my longbow on it, six pound line. Uh, this is a quiver, this has got the quiver bit to it, so that's just a simple one of those sections. I'm line that back down now. That's got the rod, uh, the pole handle in it. Open the bail arm before you uh, take that off there. When you open the bail handle, obviously the line can just spiel off, so close it, stick the bait runner on and it just draws out really, really easily. Again, what I might do is I'll thread this up and then I'll cut a rod length of uh, line off because it's 2023. Let's treat ourselves to some, we say fresh line. It's still the line that's been on the rod for probably three years, but we will just make it up as we go along. Now these come in three colors. Uh, I believe the red is the lightest and then the amber and then the green is the heaviest so as i don't really know what i'm going to be end up fishing for because i'm going to go for the light one and also it's good to just sort of hold it see what reflects well in the light that you're you're working with throw them on the floor stick that one in there So this is actually a barbel rod, which is a bit overkill for, actually it's not, because there's quite, there are some quite big carp in here, so maybe the barbel, this will be sufficient. Come on, there we go. There's a light, slight twist or something in this. There we go, pull it off a bit better now. And that's the sound we want to hear. <laughs> right, find the end of it now. This is all a bit, a bit curly. I'm gonna draw some more line. Take a couple of rod lengths of line off because it has memory. If you see, this is quite straight. So I'm gonna start again. There. 
in the box in the bag in the box wherever it goes not into the water right this is the barbel rod with the quiver on so we're going to start with a little bit of uh of a on a feeder so this is a little cage feeder on a quick change swivel thread that on like so then I'm going to tie on a quick change uh, one of these quick snap swivels these swivels are really good because you can just change the hook link really quickly I'm going to start really small and I'm going to and then if I get some bites I will start I'll build it up a bit drop that so you can't see it I hope that's the right bit no that wouldn't have been the right bit <laughs> That would have been funny if I'd have tied it onto a piece I'd already cut off. So, whatever these knots are called, five turn, seven turn blood knot or something, feed it through, wrap it around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lucky seven. Back through the first loop. If you can see it, like so. Bite it, pull it, like that. Get it wet, bite it again, pull it down tight, and snip the tag off into the box. We've only got a little tag on there, doesn't need to be, don't need to cut it right down short, just enough to not be in the way. Um, get the uh, Rig wallet out. We'll see what we're working with out of there. Quite a long one to start with on a small hook, so I'm going to go for this guy. Oh, just flick my uh, flick my pin somewhere. Find that in a minute. So that is just a loop tied on the end. Goes on this little hook here. If you can see it. Oh, pull it up. When you're trying to do it to a camera, it never, never works, does it? Little hook on there, and then that little rubber sleeve just goes over it, so it can't go anywhere. I do just like to put a little number four on there. Those are quite big, actually. Oh, maybe. It will just stop it from getting getting hooked up on it. Right, that's that one. Turn the ratchet off. Put you in there. Turn it back on. So this line isn't quite as old as the other line. So, but that end is all tangly and horrible. So I'm going to. Completely snip that off. Straight in the box. In fact, I'll put one of these. No, so I need a weighted one. A weighted waggler. There we go. We'll use this lightweight one because I want to. Because it's still calm out there. Some little, little nice fish moving over there. So these little um, quick change sleeves. Lick the. Uh, just wet it and then um, sort of feed it up onto the top and then they beep, do a bit of that. I'll put another one of these quick changes on. Just so if I do need to either up or lower the hook size then it's just ready to go. So same again, seven turns. One. Oh, there's a short one here. We'll go for this one. It's on a spade end. It was one of those pre tied ones. I've still got to have a look for that other pin that I've just thrown somewhere. I'm going to hook you on there and pull that rubber sleeve down over it. So that's quite a short hook length, but it does have the ability to be changed if needs be. And that little swivel will act like a to lay flat on the deck. 
usually you just use like a loop to loop knot but just for ease I've decided to go for these swivels yep that's sharp so now the, the fun part that all float fishermen love is plumbing the depth get one of these weights it's called a plum plum weight plum bob feed the line through it hook it in the cork some of them have like oh, like little clasps that just go over the hook and it's all it's all guesswork at this at this point so I'm thinking it's gonna be that deep I think it's deeper than that but you got to start somewhere um, so I'm gonna put a number four shot what, what does this take they say on them what they take this is one gram which uh, means zero so um, so I'm gonna just guess that that's a probably a couple of number four or a couple of BB somehow I've managed to go below the shot now but that's fine put another one on just above it I did get some float stops but have I used them? no so that's two number four Draw it out. So that's about what four foot deep now. Yeah. So if I put that up another float length, right, there we go. So it's gone up one more float length. Right now I've got that somewhat set up. I'm going to mix up some ground bait. Um, I was rooting around in the cupboard uh, at home and I found I had half of this bag of sort of matchman's mix. I mean, it's supposed to be good for sort of semi cold weather because it's got this, it's quite a dark colour. I think it's um, majoritively like probably fish meal and um, I think there's some crushed hemp in there and you know that sort of stuff I'll keep always keep a little bit because if you do accidentally over wet it whatever that is stone or something powder in um, you can always add some more so uh, yeah obviously I don't need a lot because I think the water is going to be quite cold so um, and I'm only using that feeder and this is just going to be a few little balls again try not to over wet it Just wants to be able to press into the feeder. And as I said, if I'd have them, if uh, if it was hot summer, I would have done this first, and I've got down a load of balls of it to try and uh, obviously get some interest. But where it's cold, it just wants to be. Um, a bit of feed just to maybe spark their interest but that's sort of you know that holds and it crumbles down quite nicely so I'm just going to mix that up they do say you want to riddle it I ain't got a riddle I'm not a matchman I don't riddle things it's just get it in the water I mean that balls up quite nicely and it'll break down and hopefully I don't think there's many roach in here but there's some rud and even if the carp do come on, They'll, uh, they might have a bit of interest in that. So that's a bit of that mixed up. I've still got a little bit in there just because there's not a whole lot. Bait, what we're using bait. Let's have a look. I've got sweet corn, probably still frozen, semi frozen. Won't use that yet because starting on I've got small hooks so I'm gonna start on me Maggie's that's the ones put a few of those in there 
you know what it's like. Right. Mr. McGee. Check your drag. I can come down here. Right. I'm gonna load the feeder up. And I'm gonna go one two reds and one white just to start with and we'll just see if we get any interest that sun's come right out right where I want to cast oh. that's always helpful Put him in, put him down there. Bait runner on. The reason I'm putting the bait runner on. The reason I'm putting the bait runner on is just because I'm doing filming, I'm doing all sorts. I can't always be watching it. Right, this guy. Ratchet off. I'm going to need to put another bank stick in, so I'm not keep knocking that one. Right. This guy, I think, is a similar size hook. This is a size 16, I think. One. I'm going to go for the same. Two, two reds and one white. I've actually hooked those the opposite, but we will. Uh, we will see. I don't think I'm going to be able to cast this very far because it's a very light float. Not at all. I'm literally going to be fishing this like a pole, I think. <whistles> Glorious colour now. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. It's not too washed out. So, everything's all set up now. Got the uh, float dipping away a little bit on the maggots. Had a tiny rad, but um, nothing more. Float, um, not float, the uh, feeder. Still got maggots on. Still got maggots on. Need a bit more food in. Lovely little rudlet. In the in that sunshine, they just gleam lovely. I've got a nice little pool of them going on over here now, so we'll uh, keep at it because seem to be getting better and better. So I'm um, just trying to change the just trying to change the float over on this rod, but can barely get a shot off and then it suddenly the rod next door just keeps going. So the reason I'm changing this one is I need to put a heavier float on it because I just can't. It's just too light for what I'm trying to do. So the idea of these quick change, quick change ones is you can pop it off and then find something that uh, takes a bit more weight. So like this guy, old Bendy, remember him? Used that in one of my uh, videos right at the beginning of the when I when I started doing YouTube. I think it was the first first video I uh, when I caught some fish on my um, on this uh, centre pin. So again, lick it, put it straight on, jam it right up on there. That's it. So I'm actually going to uh, shallow up as well because I think that was a bit too. 
And this is it takes three BB, which are a bigger shot. Chuck a bit more feet. Oh, just as I say, there's nothing on the float. <laughs> just as I say, there's nothing on the float. We get a tiny rod. Tiny rod on the float. So I'm going to um, put a bit more feed in and um, get that back out. I think there's a dip on that. Ooh. Yeah, a little rudder. There are some perch in here, but again, I've never fucking caught one. And the sun comes out. Little rat. Slightly better one. Oh, and he's off. Oh, and he's off. And he's back. Three maggots still on. Hopefully. Oh, tit. At least it didn't go right in the margins there, otherwise, I'd have been fishing here for the rest of the afternoon. Bobbin, bobbin, moving on the air. Uh... Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, that's better. Ooh, drop that down. There we go. That's another rod. And a tangle. Just what we need. There we go. Rud. Rud and maggots. What can go wrong? Losing night light now a little bit, but certainly no let up on these um, on these rad. So I might not have been able to pull the uh, the dream fish out of this session because we are beginning of January now, so you know it's uh, it's tough going. But I did before Christmas, take a trip up to the river. Um, wasn't able to get a big video out of it, but I did manage to pick up a first for me. So um, yeah, I'll run that clip and let me know what you think. There we go then guys, look at this guy. What do we think of him? Brown trout or sea trout? Uh, he's, uh, he's keen, whatever he is. Come down, much. Yeah. Unfortunately, not for the pot, but certainly a brilliant fish to have and save the day. So, uh, yeah. So what do we think of that? That's a real, real treat that was. When I saw it coming out of the water, I thought to myself, is that a, is that a chub? Because yeah, I've never caught anything bigger than a, you know, anything bigger than a roach out of, the, uh, out of any of the rivers. So when I saw that fish, I thought, oh my God, it's a chub. 
but no, beautiful trout. So tell me, what do you think? Do you think it was a brown trout or do you think it was a, a sea trout? Um, either way, I'm well happy. Um, so yeah, that's a real, uh, real tick in the box for me, that is. I'm going to keep plugging away at these, these bites, hopefully. Who knows? We might we come we might come across something in the in the dying hours, in the dying light. But if not, it's been what it's been. It's been a nice It's been a nice afternoon just to get out. Give it all a go. So uh yeah. If there's no more from me then that's thank you very much for watching guys. Catch you on the next one. Um But Fingers crossed, there might be something special at last knockets. So, <laughs> all the best. Happy New Year. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye.